Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our presentation for the Special Education EFS 05 Parts 1 and 2. Today, we are talking about both parts. Um, so we will start with Special Education EFS 05 Part 1, and then we will go into the um, Part 2. Part 1 is student counts. Part 2 is staff reporting. So EFS 05 Part 1, Special Education Student Counts. This is part of the October 1 enrollment collection. So this is uh, going to be in, in that collection. It's all one big collection together for October 1st. Uh, and Special Education has its own report in um, as part of that October 1 report. <clears throat> Resources for this uh, report for EFSO 5 Part 1 are going to be on the student data entry and reporting page of the MEDEM support. Um, so from our main, from the main DOE page under data and reporting, MEDEM support. And then as you scroll down, the resources have changed. We no longer have those tiles. Uh, we have these, uh, what you see here on the left, student data entry and reporting is where all of your guides are going to be. We have special, uh, we have the Synergy Uploads, which has the Special Education Data Dictionary. That's all the data that we collect on special education. Um, and then as you scroll down the page, you have student reporting instructions. And those student reporting instructions are gonna go over how to navigate into the report um, when you get to the, uh, into NEO, into student data. So we'll go over all of that today. But please be aware that those resources are also available on this student data entry and reporting page. The reporting dates, so the reporting range for this report is October 1st. Uh, so it's only looking at students who are receiving special education services on October 1. Um, <clears throat> so the report will not be available for certification during the first two weeks of October. It will be running and it will you'll see the students going into the reports, but you won't be able to click the certify button until 1016. So we have a review period for the per first two weeks of October where data can be updated in Synergy. You'll see those changes in NEO, uh, but you won't be able to select the certify button and your uh, so special education directors have to certify first before uh, superintendents. And so you won't see those buttons available until 1016. So please be aware of that. This report is due for certification by 1030. So you have that two weeks of certifying the report for the, from the 16th to the 30th. That's when that button will be available. When you can select certify, once special education directors select certify, then their, um, their superintendents can go in and certify. So, so just please be aware of that. Please make sure that your microphone remains muted during the presentation. Thank you. All right. So again, only that October 1 date is when the uh, report will be looking at. So it's only looking at those enrollments on October 1st. We'll get into that a little bit in a moment as well. All of the data entry for this report comes from your local student information system. Oftentimes you're pulling a report from that system and uploading it into the state synergy system. After that upload takes place, or if there's manual data entry that's taking place for special education data, that data then gets updated or uploaded into NEO student data on an hourly automatic ETL. So once the data has been entered into Synergy, it will not be shown immediately. Uh, you'll have to wait until the hourly ETL, which is indicated by the countdown clock on the MEDEM support page. So if you see any reports in NEO that need data updated, you will need to go back to Synergy to get that information updated. Once it's updated and changed, you will need to put that data back. Uh, you'll need to review it in, in NEO after that ETL. Special education data we talked about last week is pretty locked down in Synergy. Um, if data has been entered incorrectly, like a date or a um, service code or a placement code, um, please contact Medem support to get those updated. That is not something that SAUs can update on their own. It is something that um, needs to be done through MEDEM support. So if the data needs to be entered for the first time this year, you can go in and you can do that. Um, but if you've entered the data and something is incorrect with the data, that will have to go through the MEDEM support team. This is just a quick overview of the Special Education Data Dictionary. That resource is available on the Student Data Entry and Reporting page. 
this is the, all the data that we collect, uh, disability code, uh, alternate assessment, setting, exit date, start date, start date, um, exit date, exit reason, start date. All of that information is collected on this upload. I want to reiterate that this report is only looking at students enrolled on October 1. So if you have a student who was who started with you at the beginning of the school year and that enrollment stays open, their special education start date starts on the same day as their enrollment update, update um, enrollment date, then you would have them open. They will be counted on the October 1 as illustrated in this first example here. If you have a student who moved out on 9-29, If you have a student who moved out on 929, you will need to, uh, you, they will not be counted on this report. So uh, it's only looking at that October 1 date and 929 as an exit date means that they would not have been enrolled with you on that October 1st date. They will not count on this EFS 05 part one. The other uh, scenario to think about is that if you have a student who starts after 10-1, uh, so let's say they start 10-2, as their first day of school, they would not count on this report either because they did not have an enrollment with your SAU on 10-1. Um, so it's only looking at those 10-1 dates. If they start on 10-1 and this, at the date that's entered into Synergy is 10-1, they will count. Um, so this information is all here for you there. So let's get into how to get into the report. Um, if you need any information about how to do the Synergy uploads or Synergy data up, um, changes, uh, there we did a webinar about that last week. That is available on the Main State SIS training YouTube playlist. That is something that is accessible via direct link only. So please, if you do not have access to that link, please reach out to us and we will get you access to it so that you can view that webinar um, and other Synergy content that's available there. Today, we're focused only in NEO uh, for the uh, location of this specific report. So in terms of locating the EFS 05 part one student okay. count, you will need to go from uh, into NEO, log into NEO, student data, then to student reports, and then the October 1st student enrollment. Uh, if you do not have NEO credentials, so you're new to your SAU, you will need to have an access request submitted on your behalf by your superintendent and the MEDEM support team will go through the process of creating your account. In order for us to create your account, you do need to have an active staff assignment and that is something that someone with NEO staff access will have to do for you. Um, so if you, need, if you need access, this is the process that you need to go through, um, but we're gonna go through and just take a look at some test data so you can see where you would need to navigate to once you have your account set up. From the NEO dashboard, you would have student data. You would select student data, student reports, and then you have this list of reports. These are in alphabetical order by reporting area. Enrollments is the largest section here. Um, and if you scroll down, October 1st student enrollment and select view report, it will take you into what you see here. This is the October 1st student enrollment. This is the data that you have. I know it says 1015. Don't worry about that. It's 1030. This final submission is due on 1030 for this report. Um, so once you're here, you're going to select view so that you can link into all of the reports that are being pulled together for this October 1st enrollment. Here you can see uh, you have, again, there are multiple different reports that are included in this um, count summary details. That's going to be your overall gen general education as well as special education, how students are counting for subsidy. Um, the reports that we're going to pay attention to today are going to be the special education child count, EFS 05 part one student details. The student details report is going to give you those um, breakdown of the counts that you'll see in the student count summary report. Um, so we'll, we're going to select into that first so you can see what that the aggregate counts look like. And then you'll be able to go to this special education EFS 05 part one to see the specific students who are making up those counts. 
I also want to direct our attention to the out of district placement and the attending student de uh, attending student reports. These are students who are attending out of your out of your district, but you're still the responsible SAU and the attending students are your students who you have attending your schools every single day. So we're going to start by going into this review and taking a look at the aggregate counts of this report. So this is what you would see once you get into that review section. This is your um, this top section is your um, EFS 05 part one. This is the part that needs to be certified by special education directors. So as you can see here, it's going to just give you counts of special education by type, by um, disability type. If you wanted to know who was making up those counts, that's where that special education details report would come in. Um, and we'll take a look at that here next. Um, so this is just going to be your aggregate counts of data that's from Synergy on that 10-1 date that we talked about earlier. Uh, you can see your special education details report. And this part has to be certified first before your superintendent can go in and do the general education part. So this is part one, and this is the, the distinct part two. This is your, this top section is your um, special education section, bottom superintendent, general education, all student counts included there. This is the special education child count, uh, EFS 05 part one detail report. This is going to go into those specific students. So this is a test student that we have, or two st test students that we have here. Um, these are your students that are counting into your report. You can see here you have attending district, attending school, re uh, resident district, that's more the responsible SAU. Um, so they would be, if your um, student is out of district, you would see them in, as your resident student still. Student name, ID number, sex, race, um, birth date, age as of dates, and uh, grade level exceptionality, special education settings. Uh, so you would see all of these here. And then this last column is your student count, which would give you the student that is counting towards the report. This is um, the out of district placement report. So this would only have those students who are attending out of district. So that first student we looked at on the previous report would be listed here, whereas this report would have all of your students. Um, and this would be any students, not just special education, but any student who's placed out of district. Um, so please be aware of that, that they may not, um, they may not be special education specific. A same with the attending student details. This is not going to be special education specific. You'll see all students listed on this report as you're attending. You can still filter these reports for special education codes. So that is the special education EFS 05 part one report. Are there any questions about that section of the EFS 05? Where is the actual? Go ahead. You had said, you know, this is the upper section. This is what you need to certify. Where is the actual button to click certify? It would be at the bottom of that section. Once the report okay. is ready to certify, you would see it at the bottom of that section on 1016. When it opens up for certification, it should be right there. And you would see uh, once it has been certified by superintendent, um, I've for some reason I covered it up in this one, but there would be a date where you would see the certified date and then you would see the person who certified it and would be your special education director. And again, that won't happen until 1016. Be available. Right, 1016 is when certification opens. So you're, the first two weeks are your review. It will be loading. You can take a look at things, validate the data. Um, that's why we have it open for that period of time is for that purpose before people start pushing that button. And uh, once that uh, once that 1016 date hits, that's when you can say, OK, yep, we have verified. Everything looks great. It's ready to go. Click the button. Thank you very much. Yeah. Other questions? All right, we'll continue moving forward. We will have another opportunity for questions at the end here. Um, so if you think of something as we continue through in this second part,
please feel free to save that question. We can ask it at the end. So the EFS 05 part two is the special education staff counts. This is going to be your full-time equivalencies and qualification status of special education staff, including any special education teachers, paraprofessionals in our, SR in our state, we call them education technicians, ed techs, and then any related services personnel who are employed and contracted to specifically provide special education services to students age three to 21. So this is all based on percentage of time that a um, staff member has been indicated in their staff assignment as spending specifically with educating special education students. The resources for this data reporting are on the staff data entry and reporting page. So we had previously had student, now we're in staff. Um, so we have a page for them as well. NEO staff guides. So all of this data is entered into NEO staff and then it gets certified into in the special education section. So um, you can find guides about how to enter that data into Synergy or you can, or sorry, into NEO. Um, and then if you, or if you wanted to send this information along to your um, NEO staff personnel who have access and are updating staff in NEO, um, this would be the place where you would go for any resources of um, information there. We did a webinar um, a couple of weeks ago now uh, regarding specifically staff data entry uh, that is recorded and it's on the DOE data report, uh, reporting uh, playlist in YouTube. So that is available. Uh, you don't need a direct link for that. It's linked at the top of all of our pages on the Medem support page. So that one is publicly available. The other place to look will be under NEO staff instructions, the special education staff ESF EFS 05 part one. So there are specific instructions similar to what we'll go through today on how to access that report. Data entry for staff is entered into NEO staff module directly. That data then it updates in the NEO special education module on this EFS 05 part two uh, report. So there is no ETL for this. Um, it should show up fairly instantaneously. Um, so just this one works a little bit different in terms of how quickly the data moves from one module to another because they're both in NEO. So um, someone with NEO staff access will need to enter staff into NEO, into NEO staff, update their staff assignment, and then you will be able to go in and review the report and certify it. So entering staff for anyone who needs to enter staff will need to have access to NEO staff. If they don't, they'll need to submit an access request for staff specifically. Um, your superintendent will have to submit that on their behalf, and they do have to have an active staff assignment for that. Usually this is like an HR person, business manager, something like that in your SAU who manages all entry of all staff. So this is really important because the uh, entry of staff, how they're entered in the NEO staff module will impact whether or not they're showing up on your EFS 05 part two, uh, because it is based on your percentage of time. So there is a section in your, um, in a staff assignment where if certain positions are uh, selected, they will have to fill out whether or not there is a percentage of time that the staff member is spending specifically with special education students or students receiving special education services. So you want to make sure that you're going in and you're reviewing the counts, making sure everybody's on this list uh, in the report before you're certifying it. If anything looks incorrect, you'll want to send that back to your NEO staff person and say, OK, I thought this person was supposed to be on this report. Can we review their percentage of time spent working with students receiving special education services and then um, go from there to determine um, if they should have a percentage? And then once if it's determined that they do need that, they will be added um, as long as that's updated in their NEO staff. I see a question, Lisa. Oops. Uh, we're wondering if you can explain what this information is used for is it does it impact funding 
So this is this is our EdFax reporting, and it is tied to funding. Yes, it is the it's part of our EPS. Okay. So accessing the report. So once the data has been entered into NEO staff, then you can go in and you can access this report through the special education staff um, certification report. So if you are only doing, you're not doing the staff entry part, you're only going in and certifying the report, this is the part that you want to kind of tune into. Um, so NEO, special education under forms, you're going to have special education staff FTE certification. EFS 05 part two. That's going to be a section in the special education module under forms that you can go in and certify. If you do not have access to the special education module, again, you will have to have your superintendent submit an access request on your behalf so that you can go in and you can get that submitted. You do have to have an active staff assignment. So if you're new to the SAU, you want to check with that HR person or that person with NEO staff access to make sure that your account has been set up. So navigation into the report from the NEO dashboard, you'll have a special education module that you'll select. You'll come into the special education report. You'll select forms. And then you have the special education FTE staff certification EFS 05 part two. This kind of has three sections. So I'm going to I broke this out into sections so it would be big enough for you to see it today. Um, special education FTE certification. You'll have your current year data there. You'll have your reporting organization there. And then you'll be able to see any staff who are making up any of your counts. So you can see here you have one special education teacher, one FTE for that special education teacher has been entered into NEO staff. If you have two special education teachers, that would be something you would want to review with your NEO staff person to make sure that everyone was entered. There is a uh, view details report here which I'll get into the details report um, at the very end here so that you can see exactly the, teach, uh, the staff members who are making up these specific counts. You'll see their specific FTE and everything. So this is the first section, special education teachers. Then you have related services personnel. So any audiologists, any, anyone with these, assign these staff positions will show up on this report if they have um, a percentage of time put into um, special education specifically. Okay, so you'll just review this section, then you come down, and at the bottom, special education paraprofessionals. This would be any of your ed techs. You would see them in here. At the very bottom here, that is where special education directors certify and submit to DOE. So this is where the certification button is the very bottom. As I mentioned, we do have the details report. This is what that details report would look like. You would be able to see the specific teachers who make up the counts and they would be listed over here. You would see EdTech 3, fully certified, uh, 1.0 FTE, they're 100% um, special education. So that's their percentage of time that has been entered uh, specifically working with students with um, special education. And then this last section will be the proportion of time spent with those students. So you would be able to see all of those staff, review those staff, ensure that they are all entered correctly, um, and take it back to your NEO staff person should any of them not be here. Again, this report does get certified prior to the staff certification report being super, uh, being certified by your superintendent. So this part has to be done first before your superintendent can go in and do their staff certification for the overall staff in the SAU. So they will be waiting on you to get this part done. Um, if they're not seeing their um, certification button, it could be because this one has not been completed yet. Any questions, Lisa? Yes, we're wondering um, what you would recommend if we have some staff that 
you know, it's kind of fluid um, how much they work with special ed students. Should we be erring more like on the minimum or the maximum? Brandy, do you want to talk about that a little bit and what your thoughts are? Hi, hi, this is Sean. Um, okay, Sean. Uh, we we advise, we, we realize that that's the case quite often. Um, and so we advise on average. So take, use your best judgment, take a typical week if you want to do it that way and think about uh, on average how much time is spent serving students with disabilities. Um, we've talked to the feds about uh, about that and uh, our, our counterparts around the country and, and that's the best advice that they can give for that. So not not erring on the minimum or maximum. Think about what what is typical, what is average. Yeah, there's there's no way with with uh, changing, you know, with with the fluidity of of working with different groups of students that we can be that scientific about coming down to a hundredths of a, you know, of a of, of a percentage. So use your best guess about the typical amount. Does okay. that help? Thank you, Sean. Yes, that's very helpful. Thank you. Is there a timeline for this to be certified, the staff? Uh, it's due on the 30th. Yep. It's currently open as well. So the report is already open and you can certify. Anytime after 10 1, I believe. Um, Lisa, I see your hand is still up. Do you have a question? No, that's a mistake. So. Okay, uh, Jana. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we're contracting with like an outside organization for physical therapy services, do we have to list that on this report? Are are you you're paying them for their services? Yeah, so like we we pay them for ten hours a week to come in and provide physical therapy to our students. So they should be entered into NEO staff because they would have um, they would have contact with students. Um, so that would be something that would need to be entered into NEO staff. And then if they're spending a portion of that time with students who are receiving special education services, they would need to be marked that way as well. So if it, if it's ten hours a week, but a hundred percent of that time is with special ed students, we just do it that way, even though it's not like a full. Their FTE, their overall staff FTE would have to reflect the amount of time out of a 40 hour work week that they are working with, uh, that they're working in the SAU. And then that percentage of time would be 100% um, if it's only students receiving special education services. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Elizabeth? I have a couple of questions. One, I'm assuming that this does not include any of the staff that are under local entitlement, correct? That I'm not sure about. Sean, do you have any information about that one? I'm not sure the distinction that's being made. So any staff that works, um, that has been hired or contracted to work with special education, we want to know about them. Okay. I'm not sure about the distinction between local entitlement and and those other it's, activities. It's just a different funding source, so I just wanted to make sure. That oh, regardless of the funding source, so the okay. answer is Perfect. yes, we would want to know about them. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then my second question has to do with contracted services as well. We have services that are not their 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 consult, and it could really vary across the the school year. So I'm just curious how to do the FTE for them. Yeah, that's that's another common problem that's related to what I mentioned earlier. Uh, do your best to to um, to estimate um, the FTE on them. Okay. Um, I mean, it may it may it may functionally come out to almost zero. I've seen that in some cases. I mean, if a contractor is coming in, you know, twice has come in twice in a year, um, you know, and then you do the division. You know, it may round to to basically zero. Um, just 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 do your best with estimating that. 
So it could we could be forced to enter a zero on there, or or can we can we enter? Um... Yeah, the instructions uh, somewhere in the instructions. I don't have them in front of me now. Um, it it makes explicit uh, the rounding, and so if it's you know i think we round to the tens i'm not i'd have to look at the it's it's made very explicit in the instructions so if you look at the instructions it'll say but okay. if if they turn out to be like a hundredth of an fte if we're rounding to the 10 then that person would would essentially be a zero okay perfect does Thank that you. make sense yeah 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 i'm not sure if they can put in a zero if they if, if a zero can't be put in i would put in oh, a one to indicate i i'm not sure about that um maybe my my colleagues um, can answer better you can it will technically take a zero but um we ask that you at least put in a point one That's okay what I'm thinking. to show that okay, they're working so at some one. capacity in the sau okay so then point one would be the minimum yeah so anything below 0.1, if they're actively doing something that doesn't rise to the 0.1, you would at least put a 0.1, that sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Lisa G. We did not hit that again. I don't know if you can take the no, hand. No, it's a different Lisa. Oh. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all set. I was gonna answer Elizabeth's questions. It's, it's um, all staff, whether you pay for them out of local entitlement, even if you pay for your contracted staff out of local entitlement, you still have to include them. There's, and there are funding sources in their staff positions uh, outlined on that staff data entry and reporting page. If you have questions about that, either too. Um, Dr. June Sellers. Yeah, I just wanted to say if you have contracted staff that are, um, you know, consulting on a particular student, those minutes for consultation are going to be on the IEP and you can calculate those on an annual basis so that you could enter this into the report. Perfect. Any other questions today? And again, if we if any questions um, come up after today's meeting, um, as you're entering this data, reviewing your report, please feel free to reach out to medms.support at maine.gov, M-E-D-M-S dot support at maine.gov. Uh, visit that website. Vis our Medems support page has a lot of really great resources for this reporting. Um, and then if you need to give us a call, 207-624-6896 is our number. Remind me again what FTE stands for. Full time equivalency. Like so it's uh, based on a 40 hour work week. How much of that 40 hour work week are they working? Great question. Um, yeah, I just wanted to chime in as well. Um, we get a lot of questions every year about um, the certification. And so some districts, um, like if you guys certify your data, you know, say, October 1st or October 5th or something, and then you have a new staff come on board on the 7th or the 10th, people always wonder, you know, should we decertify, recertify? Um, that's totally up to you. Um, the process here, we're just trying to have you guys like lock in a, um, you know, a best picture of your staff. So if you want to just kind of touch base with the superintendent and kind of just agree on a date, um, I usually would just advise, you know, if people are really concerned about it, just wait until the 30th. Um, that way, you've pretty much gone as long as you can. You'll see as many people come and go as you will. Um, and then you guys just lock in the data. And then if someone starts on November 5th, it doesn't matter. It's fine. We we just need that snapshot. Um, we're not here to count every you know individual because we have to we have to stop at some point, right? So. Thanks, Mike. All right, if there are no questions, I think we can probably wrap up today. Um, please feel free to reach out with anything that comes up. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday and a great end of your week. Um, we do have one more webinar. The staff certification webinar is on Tuesday at 12 o'clock for anyone who is um, invested in completing that report. The second part of this uh, EFS 05 part two uh, that the superintendent certifies. So. We will talk about that on Tuesday at noon. 
Registration is available on the event calendar, and we're here to help you through reporting. So happy to help. Have a great rest of your day.